Yeah, it should, yeah. So how does it feel to be uh, the top wrestler in the country? I would be able to tell you it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, yeah, that's your... my brother, I guess. <laughs> oh, I thought it was you. <laughs> well, he'll take you out in the hallway and give you lessons. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be easier than what my wife will do to you. <laughs> yeah, they'll both tell you that they're most afraid of our daughter, <laughs> by far. <laughs> I actually think it's you. Me? I oh. think it's you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys can take over whenever you're ready. Do this quick rundown of your yeah, proposal and then lots um, of questions. Yeah, so it's pretty similar you to know, last time. When we last when we last met, we were just doing a single story building, um, taking a concept out of Alexandria, Minnesota. That's been really doing well in a uh, in a small town there. Um, got connected through one of our good friends and partners in some other business. Um, you know, his uh, his daughter had created this concept and. I think the, the biggest change that has been made since then is obviously the addition of uh, a multiple story building with um, apartments uh, or, or commons above. So, um, not sure um, where, what we want to do there yet if apartment or commons are a mix or if that's even uh, an option, but um, to, to utilize the zoning to go up. Uh, as, many stories as we can to provide additional living spaces. So. And that's unfolding out of the fact that the last time it seemed like that was more the desire for the town. All of everyone's input had been that you would like to see more housing in the city of Lowell. And we took that concept back to the table with the partners and felt that that was an idea of we of combining the needs that everyone is looking for. All right, ready for some questions? There's going to be a lot of questions, so, uh, just so you know. Uh, the city's vision for the Lion Shaft is reconstruction and will be will be a catalyst project on the west side of the Platte River, and thus uh, revitalizing the area. In essence, the city is looking for a unique and dramatic interest for this line check. Why do you believe your firm uh, can provide this, and what would your firm do to uh, make this happen? Can you speak to that, or you want to speak to that? I think one of the unique things that I see that our business proposal brings to the table is this gathering place that's both a morning gathering place and an evening gathering place for our town and the bottom of housing that has been so desired for additional housing need in Lowell. And what I mean by gathering place is this is a town that 17 years ago my husband brought us to. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I was like, where are you taking me? And, you know, you pull into town and there's these massive silos out there. And I'm like, what are we doing? You know, we're coming from East Lansing, Hazlitt area that doesn't really have a town. And over the years, this town has become more of a home than I ever could have hoped for for my family. And in 17 years, I feel like I was born and raised here myself. And that says a lot when you're up against people that have been here five, six generations. And it's very unusual almost in this town to only be here for 17 years. But what I've seen over the years is a town that gathers, that likes to gather. You know, everyone has their differences, but then they come back together. And when you're in need of a neighbor or friend, I mean, you can go to local places and everyone kind of knows each other, almost like cheers for those of you old enough to know, you know, where everyone knows your name. And for good or bad or all the drama that that can sometimes bring to the table, especially when related to coaches in the town, um, that's really a good overall thing because we pull each other through a lot. And I see the concept of the edge being that type of place where you can go and have your morning coffee and someone says hello, good morning, and you can air out your problems, and we can all go there. It's not just a 
woman's boutique where you get women's clothing that's only a draw for women. It's also a coffee shop. It's not just a men's boutique, or not that that would even be a draw for the men in my family, but um, a place for all groups of all ages. And that's what I think the unique concept of it all is. And the last time we were in front of all of you listening to the city council meeting, I even thought you had a woman come forward that had the problem of trying to figure out a place where she could rent out her canoes. And we would be open to even discussing that. I don't know if that's possible in this space, but she's looking for some waterfront place. So that's what I see this as, like willing to open up and talk about all ideas of what we can bring to the downtown. And as we've traveled around with the boys competing, that's what I've seen in these other up and coming places, gathering places, coffee shops, that roll into also having a drink at night. So not just morning shops, after dinner drinks where people come together. So that's what I see this place is bringing to this town and people all enjoying it. All right, thank you. What are your cost estimates to fully convert the building? Have you completed a preliminary pro forma? Have you completed a project of this nature? And what percentage of the product are you anticipating financing? Yeah, so I, um, you know, we're estimating about, you know, two million, two million dollars to, and I think we're really leaning heavily to, uh, you know probably take down the existing structure and put a new existing structure up to expand the square footage footprint. Um, and uh, and yes, you know, with with, with the certain number of apartments up top along with the retail space in the bottom, you know, we put a we put a preliminary pro forma together. Um, you know, and we initially we buy the building, you know, from from the city in cash, but then finance probably um, anywhere between 80 and 75 percent on commercial loan with the bankers that we that we use that we work with in our other lines of business. Um, uh, you got all different backgrounds in the partnership group, um, all different lines of things. You know, obviously, you, know, you looked at you know the builders putting ethanol and uh, their their ventures into all kinds of different things. You know, there's you know, there's us that are in multifamily and um, you know pretty heavily into storage, so uh, you know, we've developed projects, uh, executed successful projects just across the board in uh, a bunch of different industries and, and professions, so, and all, all local, you know, for the most, for the most part as well. So. Will you be seeking any assistance from the uh, Michigan Economic Development Corporation? And if so, what we you be asking you going to be asking anything from the city of Lowell? No. <clears throat> no to both? Or no, no to both? Or? No to both. Okay. Thanks. Right. <clears throat> One of the city's biggest concerns was sell the property to a developer for potential development. However, the development decides not to move forward with the project for maybe five to ten years or sells the parcel to another entity who doesn't intend to develop it. While the city recognizes development projects take time, and there are many issues that come along the way. What steps will you take to alleviate the city's concern of purchasing the property and not moving forward with the development? We have no intention of not moving forward as quickly as possible. Um, I don't, I mean, obviously. Well, I, mean, I think it's personal too, you know, like to us, you know, we're, like she said, yeah. so we grew up here from the town you know, we've seen the town about the city developing. Um, you know, we, we really want to be a part of that. Um, and Our team's ready to go. I mean, I think that's as yeah, simple as it yeah, can be put. Yeah. So once we would have the property, it would just go into finalization of the print and approvals and all of that. Um, we've all been involved with small businesses for many, many years. and. Even though he says that you know that he's heavily involved in storage, I mean, he just over a year ago started the storage unit business and he's always operated kind of like the drag store. He goes from zero to 120 in no time. So we've got storage facilities all across the country already. So we're just not, if we don't have the plan to act, we wouldn't be in front of you right now. Now, obviously, 
I've constructed every home that we've lived in, so I know that you hit roadblocks along the way, but you're talking about months of delays, not years. Um, and we'll be braced for those because everyone involved has constructed things, so they know that you're going to hit construction delays, but it's not our intent, and I don't know any other way to put it, to sit on the project by any means. If we get delayed by a permit or something, that would be only short term. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the city of Lowell is looking for a tenant with the ability to complete the project and to have a system in place Please tell us that you will work with the city to ensure that you can adequately fund this project and continue to have sustainable operation. Everyone's already been pre-approved for what we're going after. Um, we already have bankers in place that are interested in the whole project. Um, the development team, engineering firm, um, yeah. plants. Designers. Yeah. Like oh. everyone's already teed up in place for other projects and this project. Yeah, the primary contractor as well. The existing edge has been open now. How long? Uh, I want to say here. just, just I think it's been just uh, it's about a year and a couple months right now. It was from conception to finish. It was done six months. I think on the sustainability piece, part of it. Is the you know having the living space um, and the you know the space for community engagement. And on that piece, really for the project for us, it's it's uh, we're interested in being part of developing all we're all vested into. I mean, we live here, and even though we're not in the city, the city the city matters to us. We're here. I mean, we're, this is our town. So, I don't know. That's, we're just interested in working here. And I think the concept of the edge that exists in Minnesota needs some tweaking to really service our community, in my opinion. And that's a part of why I got a little bit more involved, too. I think it has more of a contemporary flair to it and maybe some things in it that wouldn't service all of what I see our community's needs are. Um, so that's how I think the sustainability comes in a little bit stronger, is understanding what you're going into. We stayed in a similar place in Pennsylvania when we were there for one of Max's events where they had like a gathering pastry coffee place on the lower level and then we stayed in an Airbnb that was among some other condos on top. And it was definitely the gathering place for that town and all of the same concepts of the edge, but I felt felt like it had more servicing needs for our town than like Alexandria, Minnesota. So it won't be the exact plan. I don't think that exact plan would sustain as well here. So we're definitely tuned in to what is going on to the town. I have a sister that lives down here now that feels like she's a townie now and <laughs> runs around. And she's like, wow, you know, we've got a whole community. There's an, I had to convince her to not move to downtown Grand Rapids. And she's like, I don't know what I was thinking. This is so much better than like, I told you. So, you know, we're listening to her and her people that she's already befriended. and. Um, we're just, we're good listeners too, and I'm willing to listen to all of the input. We all are, our whole team is. How big is Alexandria? I probably should have Googled it, but I didn't. Um, <coughs> it depends on if you know, if you're looking at it in the, the, the spring and summer, as opposed to, you know, you get a lot of people out of Minneapolis that come there. It's a late community. Oh, okay. Um, so they, they come there for their summer, the summertime, um, you know, but uh, I'd say generally it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's a pretty wide range, but I'd say generally you're sitting right between 10 and 15,000 people. Okay. The city of Lowell is focusing on creating a sense of place for the downtown district by enhancing our natural assets and creating a walkable community. What does this mean to you, and how will you embrace this in your project? Have you, in your previous projects been involved with enhancing this idea in other communities? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, for me, yeah, I, uh, my problem with a couple of partners actually a building right on, right on Main Street in downtown Otsego. Um, and we, you know, it was, it was owned by an older gentleman that was, uh, had left uh, the main commercial space pretty vacant. And uh, we came in and uh, brought, uh, leased it out to a woman that was bringing in actually her business model, leased it out to other businesses, and we worked with her and getting uh, a bunch of other local businesses in place. And now um, it's a huge part of the town. And, and I get pictures all the time. Of, we let a guy come and put his snow cone stand outside too for the summer. So we get, I get pictures of all these lines and all these people coming through all the time. Um, but to their point, you know, we this whole concept, not only just being on the water, you know, which is a really unique and, and neat thing for downtown, but also creating a, the environment you know, of you know, driving traffic towards you know, and bringing that that whole corridor together over there is what we're really excited about. And why you know, why you should, it's part of our big one of the things that we feel like we want to execute this plan is to to extend that walk. You know, people walk across the bridge, go to Ripple, and come over for a, you know maybe for a drink or a coffee or a pastry over at you know the edge, um, but connecting that whole corridor. Uh, added to that contribution of walking space. So. You've kind of already done the hard stuff for us because you've got all the trails. Yeah. I mean, my sister's got her little loop that she's doing all the time and all the same people that she sees, so you've already done the hard part. The trails are there. <laughs> we just have to create the desire of, hey, I need to go down to the edge. You know, I want to have a drink with someone. I want to have a coffee. With. Let's meet there tomorrow morning. So you've done the hard part. You've led them there. We just got to create the desired place, destination. Um, and the other thing we talk about is as engagement with all the other businesses. And it's one of the things that's like exciting is um, to, to have that downtown contribute to being more fun, more of a place where people are interested in coming. So it's like we're, we're like really open to, to um, that. I mean, you guys have the nice, you know, entertainment down here in the summer, but you know, getting more entertainment, getting more people like one of the awesome things that we like going to in some of the places that we visit is, you know, you have a saxophone player out on the street or you know, outside the building playing, you know, the live music, and the, it's just it's just fun. People want to be outdoors and be a part of that. And uh, those types of things are, I think, are really interesting to the whole group that we're in. And we're, you know, we haven't talked to you much about that type of stuff, but we presume, I mean, when we're, I was listening to your last meeting, you know, it's about the events that you have and drawing the people in, you know, getting people from the outside to come in, mix with their Any pending legal issues, criminal, foreclosure, bankruptcy, or civil? Yep. See, maybe some of you. Very disappointing. I know this. Every time I hear. Like, if you had one, are you going to tell us? <laughs> we'll find it. Well, I, I should have looked at it. You know, well, you I hear the <laughs> siren now. Oh, come on, Cliff. <laughs> This is, um, if you're selected by the city to purchase and redevelop the city, the city will be crafting a mutually agreed upon development agreement. Have you worked with a development agreement in the past? And is this an issue uh, for you with this project? Not with a governing body like a city or a township. I mean, like only in the sense that you have to always work with any township or city that you're building in, you know, association when you're building a home buying into an association, things like that, but not like a city of any particular place. Um, I guess you've worked with the city of Otsego. Yeah, we worked with the city of Otsego on that project. Oh, well, you know, we've worked with the city of Lowell on the storage unit and getting approval on that. Township. Township. Uh, county. Yeah. County. 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 We worked with them. Um, you know, we, I mean, on my side, side of business, we were in development, so we, we work with city, with cities and townships. We know there's rules we're going to have to follow where we go into and, and planning. Yes, 
I'm very familiar with the process and I've done it plenty of times and um, completely like you know, open um, to input and you know, obviously we want it to be a positive working relationship with the city. You know, and we want you guys to be just, just as proud as we are of the project. So. The city of Lowe is a public body, and in dealing with a public body, transparency is of the utmost concern. There is some strong possibility that the process moving forward will be highly scrutinized by the public. Is this a concern for your firm, and how do you plan to address this as we move forward? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there another way? <laughs> so, yeah, you live in Lowe, you see. Yeah, I realize probably talking to people in Lowe, I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, no. You decide to play football in the wall and start. Yeah, I realize talking to people, oh my goodness, you think I know if your kid's starting next week. I don't even know if my kid's starting next week. I don't know if your kid's starting. <laughs> no, but honestly, um, in any business relationship, even in the confidential nature that I operate in, when I'm working with my clients as a CPA, I'm totally transparent with that client. I've obviously got privacy disclosures and things like that intact with my business, but at the same time, if we're working with someone on developing things, the worst thing that you can do is hide something. I mean, that doesn't work out long term. No matter who you are or what you're building or what you're doing, it's going to eventually it's just like a kid being caught in a lie eventually, and eventually the truth comes out. So why not just let's all put everything out there in the front end? And I would ask for the same in return from any group that I'm working with, and I tell that to all my clients. I'm like, I'm more than happy to be transparent with you, but if you hide something from me, like you've got an impending jail thing or something around the corner, I write letter that you tucked away. Actually, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to buy the other shit. My criminal record has nothing to do with it. Doesn't have to be discussed, does it? Um, so honestly, that's the only thing that we ask in return. Is don't hide anything from us either and try and catch each other. Let's all just work together and try and build something special. Thank you. Of course. You're welcome. Um, this uh, question is, do you have any questions for us? One of my main questions is, does the city have an issue with the building being torn down, or did you foresee the project as something that is only being added on to, and you feel pretty protective of that? I would personally think that's what any developer chooses to do with the property. Um, whether you tear it down, uh, go through the process with the Eagle, which more than likely you'll have to, leave the structure up and work around the existing. Uh, that's, in my opinion, that's up to each developer. That's, you know, okay. that's your dollars. That's not our dollars to spend. Okay, that's good to know. All the way through the first round of this into now, I've always thought, as long as it's beneficial to the community and it fits in the downtown, I couldn't care less about how you get there. Okay. It's you know, not my job to tell you how to get there in that respect, I guess, um, just to make sure that it fits with what we're doing and what we've been trying to do for the better part of the decade. I have no emotional or mental tie <laughs> to that cinder block building. <laughs> do any of you see something that we're not hitting on? Like something else that could be introduced into this overall plan? Do you know of a desire that the town, the city of Lowell has been coming to you with? It's like, man, it would be great to have. You have any desire to build in all these? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> I can't help you. Outside of all these, there's else that maybe we could. Um, I often hear complaints about the hours which business operates. Um, okay. We have a lot of like dinners, right? Or we're closed Mondays, or it's, if it's open at dinner time, it's closed in the morning. So to hear extended hours where it could be morning and afternoon and evening thing is something that I think would satisfy a lot of people's needs. That's great to know that you're hearing that too, because we as customers have yeah. ran into those frustrations, and that's right. something that we were trying to hit on. Like, Gosh darn it, it's Monday again, they're closed, yeah, right. you know. And kind of to the point where you're like, is there a fundamental issue? You know, that's just kind of on our mind. Like, what have we not figured out? Um, so <laughs> like if we're open, are we just like, 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 why wouldn't I, 
if we were selling coffee, why wouldn't we be open on Monday? And especially before our business starts. Well, we're also like coffee, like caffeine coffee freaks. freaks. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a good way to put it. So. I think there's so few that are open on a Monday. And if you, you know, for especially me, when we try to flip on a Monday, it's, it's, it probably is going to cost me money at the end of the day to time I fire everything out and run the lights and AC. And gotcha. We just don't have, I would like to think eventually with the new restaurants and everything coming in, I would like to think as a business owner, not as a city council person, but um, we do see an increase and in Mondays will be looked at. But okay. I know we're looking to expand hours for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday just to accommodate we're interested in those like critical mass thing, just the ideas, you know, that help push people over the you know, edge, you know, all the other things that you know, we're, we do in the other you know, business. Really all the other things that we do. Right? That's all, always the thing we're looking <laughs> yeah. at. Like, how do we, you know, like how, do we, how do we get there? I think when you look at the business plan too, you know, um, it, every business plan is different and, you know, that affects your hours. Like, you know, the, you know, the overhead to, to run a, a coffee shop and a place to grab a drink and, and, and the, the, that kind of business is probably a lot different than opening a whole restaurant too. So, you know, your costs are probably a lot more in check with being able to, you know, be open and extend those hours to her point. Any concern or experience with a late night spot or an early morning spot with living quarters above it? Like, is it hard to maintain a tenant or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it a spot that's going to be hard to constantly have residential if they're open until 2 a.m.? I've talked about the like, different construction designs because I've wondered the same thing just from like even to, even just hotels having that downtown downstairs area where people mm -hmm. grab their breakfast and stuff and people are staying in their hotel rooms and, um, you know, thankfully, we, you know, the tech, technology just in just like everything in building has is uh, advanced, and there's certain things that you know the way that we construct the building to make more soundproof barriers to make sure the tenants upstairs are are taken care of um, will definitely be in place 100. percent and, and quite honestly, we want to offer the amenities you know uh, to the tenants upstairs in a way where you know maybe I I used to go to this place when I when I lived in Ithaca, New York, and I was going to Cornell and. Um, go downstairs but the tenants upstairs could order like coffee to be delivered to the room upstairs. You know, so we, we those kind of ideas we want to wrap in and make sure you know the tenants are happy. You gotta have happy tenants. So. Well, um, I know we're asking more than the questions, but there, uh, how uh, you you said you're envisioning a coffee place in the morning and a wine kind of thing. How late do you anticipate I mean, you think in like nine o'clock, or I mean, you're not talking about two in the morning. No, not two in the morning. Or um, no. Not two in the morning at all, but not nine a.m. necessarily either. No, no, I meant nine p.m. Oh, sorry. Well, that's what I. I'm assuming a coffee not, shop you're gonna. Yeah, open nine p.m. Oh, or coffee here time. Is not, late. We just had. Yeah, but we weren't thinking nine p.m. because I'm thinking about the person that might come down and want to still visit after they've had dinner at Flat River, so. I don't, in my head, I'm thinking 11-ish. You've got this awesome open container law, too, here, which is uh, pretty unique. So I think that could play in well where people, you know, they grab something to, you know, they, can, they can walk, but like the whole walking with and being able to walk around and enjoy each other while you have know, a beverage meet up in different places is super cool. I mean, that's a super neat, that's a pretty unique thing. I mean, Savannah, Georgia has it, you know, that's when we're, we're there and we, we take full advantage of it, so the, the, I think we want to, you know, contribute. That, that's a big thing to contribute to, but not till you know, mm -hmm. two, two a.m. No, not right. till two a.m. Yeah. We just uh, had one of those experiences. I saw had a bachelor party this last weekend. There's not a lot good going on. Okay. <laughs> After midnight, man. I mean, it was yeah, you know, really <laughs> great. Yeah, it's <laughs> midnight, so. Well, the city, when you talk about a contract that whoever you select is signing and then working with the city on the construction and overall plan. 
will they continue to, or all of you continue to need and give input about topics that we're currently discussing? That's one of the questions that I have. Like, do you foresee a problem if we try, you know, staying open till midnight and adjust from there? Or is that not what you just sign in the contract that we're doing what we agree to do and then that's it? The, the, the agreement is only about getting things done there. Yeah. I don't okay. think any of us want to concern ourselves with any, anybody's yeah. hours. Yeah, you'd have to check with city ordinances and noise ordinances okay. and find out what Other the law is all attacked yeah. to stay in compliance with. Okay. Yeah. And on the subject of hours, I'm not the rep to the... Nothing would make Liz Baker happier than if everybody on Main Street said, I'm going to be open seven days a week from X to X, or even six, because we've had the discussion eight million times, but when you have 20 different people, I, my, you guys know me and Julie, yes. Yes. we're not going to be there seven days, sorry. <laughs> we did six for about 15 years, and we're trying to and, and the only reason I bring that up is that's why you don't see standardized hours around here. I played with my hours multiple times to, And it you know, makes sense. Well, yeah. yeah the, different the, businesses the return on types. investment isn't right. worth being here. Right. right. I, I look right. at some of these people that are open till 8 and 9, and God bless them, I used to be open till 8, and I sat in there twiddling my thumbs. But every business is different. Right. And, and, and we, we won't be concerned about your hours. Well, hopefully you close up and then come down and have a drink. You enjoy it. So the last question we have for you is parking. We have 543. Yes. And which might close what we have. Uh, but over on that side of the river, we are very limited to what we have. And uh, if you, do you have a plan try to find accommodating parking or something of that nature over there. I, know, but I, I knew you know in the first time around that was going to be that, that was obviously a big concern um, and you know the business model we kind of try to set up that uh, people can come and congregate to you know a certain level it's not like the square footage print of that building is is 10,000 square feet right so I think you know it has a certain capacity um, that allows the flow of traffic to work probably pretty well with with the parking that's provided. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we were chosen, um, we definitely want to you know dive into working with making sure the traffic flow and everything um, you know is sustainable and work well. But we're going to try and put them on the pass, get the feet walking <laughs> when weather permits. Well, where's that? Yeah. All, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. All set. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys. Well, thank, thank you for your time. We appreciate your time. the opportunity. Do you want to take a break, or do you want to start right now? <laughs> All right, we'll take seven. The, cam the camera wasn't off for that, just so you know. <laughs>